start your day with the sweetest smile. A very good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to all for the third day of ACTE-sponsored online HTTP on Tableau Data Visualization Tool for Researchers. Session 7 will be on Business Intelligence Tool. It will be handled by Mr. Kayas Hanifa. Now, I request Ms. Rajeshwari to introduce our resource person. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our resource person, Mr. Kiyaz Anifa, to the academy. Our resource person, Mr. Kiyaz Anifa, is a tech survey and a passionate computer professional. Mr. Kiyaz Anifa is a chief technology officer at Phonicom Limited, Malta. Mr. Anifa started his career as a customer support in 1998, and over 22 years of experience, he has no clear threat. He is extensively experienced to unify communication security, internet networking, cloud, big data, and analytics. His area of expertise include networking design and implementation, product design and development, strategic technology planning, vendor management, leadership and supervision, project management, enterprise data management, building Linux tools. His journey from a customer support to chief technology officer is truly remarkable and an inspiration to all of us. We are honored by your presence, sir. Now, I request our resource person, Mr. Kia Zanifa, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you hear me, please? Yes, yes sir. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for giving the opportunity again for this wonderful session on uh, data visualization for researchers and uh, and analytics i would say and uh, right now i think um, uh, uh, since it's the third day i would have i would uh, <clears throat> believe that you would have learned a lot on lo uh, different segments of uh, how data is handled how data is seen on different ways so let me give again a, a small introduction and uh, i will i'll share some slides so that i will walk you through the the nitty-gritty of the business intelligent tools and uh, visualization tools of the modern days whatever we are using this generation see today uh, i would have you would have seen data data we all hear data what are the sources of data? What are the types of data? So that is where our whole uh... one sec, let me share my screen. One second. So data is everywhere and there are different types of sources of data always and the the sources are of different types. It could be unstructured data, it could be structured data, semi-structured data, raw data. So all these things are sources of data. But you could have heard recently that these data volumes are exploding because there is exponential data growth in every segment of life. You take public sector, private sector, or in an industrial, in an industrial or in an office, or in the or in the government organizations even the recent pandemic everything you have data growth every day every second and every minute so that's where the data is growing at a faster rate so you can store data but it becomes useless unless you extract value out of it so where can we store it properly and extract values out of it is the biggest question mark See, there are different ways you see data because today I would say that the, uh, the unstructured data could be, for example, a PDF. Someone raised hand, please. Uh, yes, you want something? Uh, someone raised their hand now. Shall I continue? Yes, sir. 
Okay, no, someone raised the hand, so that's the reason. Okay, sorry for that. So, like I would say, um, uh, unstructured data could be uh, PDFs, JPEGs, MP3 files. Semi structured data could be CSV, Excel, JSON file, XML files. And structured files could be uh, from the databases of Oracle, MySQL, or uh, Informix, or whatever, or Cassandra, all those things. So, this is the different forms of data you see right now, and we handle it daily at every moment of life for for whatever applications we are running, whatever uh, purpose of uh, shopping or um, we are doing banking. So everything goes on a what you call a structured or a semi-structured data, semi-structured data. So now this data we need to see it as a different element how to make it as a profitable a profitable element that's why nowadays oil is called data is called an oil now because oil is becoming more valuable okay not now but it changed the whole economy of the world these uh, like few years few decades back so that's how we envisage we anticipate data would, would be a new oil for our upcoming future so that is the value that is the importance of data we see right now in this whole world like we we we, we could take for example any application like an erp application cr uh, crm application a workflow management or uh, or a mobile application or a shopping application everything gives lot of trail of data so this data needs to be clean structured and presented in a in a good form for for analytics so this is where the whole process of business intelligence lies so i could always segment it we could always segment it into different areas of the expertise on on a career level on an engineering level and on a, on a expertise level but whatever is the case what we do is we collect data from systems filter and they clean the data, then enrich and prepare the data, model it and visualize it. So in a nutshell, what we do is, it goes in a process. The structured, the semi-structured uh, data goes into a process of cleaning and structuring. Then you prepare it to your needs, modelize, modelize it, normalize it, then visualize it. To extra extrapolate the values out of it, for the business managers, strategy managers, CEOs or directors or whatever. So this is where the whole science of data evolved and it got into the data science. So it could have a different process. We can get into we can get into one by one, not a problem. But you have to see where the whole thing evolved. How the from the scratch of the data it went into the problem problem of visualization. So this visualization itself is a, is a what you call a branch by itself where you need to learn a lot of tools, business intelligence tools to visualize it. You may ask, you may ask why, what happens with the legacy systems? What happens with the, um, what happens to the query based systems? All those things, Excel based systems, everything is there, still there. But what, 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 what the disadvantage is when you're going on a volume of data, terabytes of data, exabytes of data, you will not be able to handle in one tool. So that is where we diversified. The, the, the diversification happened to unify it into a, into a global picture with the big picture with the business intelligence tool, business intelligence tools, as simple as that. So, so the, the, there was always a problem. So for that problem, we always had a solution. That's all. That's how every problem to solution in this technology works. You have a problem, you have a story to tell. On that story, you need how to present it and what is the solution for it. So the problem was handling volume of data and the story is to get the extrapolate, extrapolate the value out of it. What is the solution for that? You, you The data goes on a process. From that process, you get the data, you get the data cleaned and structured and visualize it. So as simple as that. So that is that is the whole beginning of the business intelligence, I would say. 
So as I gave in the introduction, as I briefed in the introduction, data is a new oil as quoted by Neely Cross. Why? Because it creates, we can create targeted recommendations using data analytics. Convert dull statistics into visible and useful, usable insights. Optimize customer experience by building interactive platforms. I will explain, I'll go through one by one. Analyze and repackage and relabel data. Implement data-driven strategy. Achieve a consistent flow of data. Operate platform as a service databases. Okay. What is that first? Why data is called the new oil? We are creating targeted recommendations with data analytics. Okay, right now, let us take a simple example of a bank. We all use for transactions. We use, uh, we always use bank as uh, like uh, to deposit withdraw cashes. But now they get into the model of checking your spending history, how you spend your money, how you save your money in order to promote you and upsell you a lot of business schemes, marketing schemes. For example, they will ask you, someone will call me from the bank, why don't you invest some money on this particular uh, mutual funds or, for, or on SIP? or on stocks and shares or or e-gold or whatever so this is done with the with the history with the savings and the spend history how you are spending money based on that they recommend their customers to do a what you call a cognitive investment so that you can you can they can do much more business it both benefits the customers and the bank so you see a big strategy change from 10 years back to now where bank are thinking in a more analytic way of handling your statements and you are spend time you can spend your credit card you can spend by a credit card debit card or whatever so all those things can be grouped aggregated and arrive a pattern out of it from that pattern we can, the bank could always say that okay this guy is can invest some money on x this why this guy can invest some money on y so this kind of things could be analyzed as a first as a first as a as a first value this is the first value you arrive out of it so someone is raising hand Kanya Kumari, so, so I can start, I can go ahead. Hello? Yes, no, there was, uh, there was a person raising hands, so that's all right. Okay. All right, okay. um, so the first point we are talking about target recommendations using data analytics. So that's a simple example was that. So then now all these e-commerce platforms, what they do is they watch your purchase patterns, what you buy, what can you, what they can recommend so that you can increase the shopping cart. Like you can call any, any e-commerce platforms. So they, what they do is they analyze in the course of time in the last one year, six months or time basis, they try to analyze your purchase patterns. Then they recommend a new item. Okay. This is, there is an offer for this. You can listen to this. Uh, they, you can um, get into this like, and also YouTube, YouTube like recommends new movies and music based on the recently watched items. Spotify, for example, the music online online music store recommends. Okay, this music you can you can listen because you have watched you have listened to this kind of music already. So these things we can see that there are a lot of background work, recommendation work, classifier algorithms 
running in the background by the team of engineers and analysts and data scientists to push the recommendations based on each and every step. So that is, that is the reason, that is the first reason I would say how data is valuably used, how data is valuably pushed to the consumers. That's the first trap point. Now, you can say that the second is a convert dull statistics into visible and usable insights. See, this is, we have always have uh, what you call uh, something always we need something attractive or visually, visually which can attract people to read a, a read an advertisement or whatever it is because we see a lot of advertisements but we don't get into the details of it that's how it is because they visualize it and deliver the message properly so that you will not miss the agenda of that particular advertisement so it's simple as that but advertisement always carry to sell something likewise you have so much of data around you have as you said like we have structured data semi-structured data uh, raw data data coming from the api coming from the csv json xml all those things but this is not this is more not is, a, is not so visibly available to see what you can extract out of it so that is the reason that is the reason we are converting that into a visible and usable insights because otherwise you will lose the gist of it because once you see that okay on this particular day my sales was this on this particular day my sales was this on this particular day we had so many customers on this particular day i had so many customers then i will be able to compare why there was a fall downfall in the number of customers why there was a downfall in the customers on the particular day why the sale dropped on a particular day why what happened it could be a stock problem it could be a it could have rained or it could be a natural calamity or it could be a covid issue or whatever like so these things these things in one glance you will be able to analyze with the insight when you convert that statistics visible and more visually uh, more usable insight so that is that is the reason that is the reason business intelligence tool is getting into the new era a new era of visualization then optimize customer experience by building interactive platform that's what i already told you like when when we are using these shopping platforms or whatever or uh, the music platforms or the movie ott platforms or whatever they are optimizing the the vendors the engine vendors the uh, the uh, the e-commerce platform uh, vendors what they do is they optimize their tool so that it is it is targeting it is targeting the right product for the right person at the right time so that is where the optimization is done to improve the customer experience and also what happens is this on a on a different level when you call them for a support what they do is they try to analyze the problems which if it is an existing problem or it is a new problem and based on that they will be able to give a ai based reply a artificial intelligence based reply they do a natural language processing of your of your ticket of your uh, request then they say that okay this is a normal problem we get for this product so for example uh, if you buy a certain type of a mobile and you say that okay this battery always fails and if you get the complaint that this but like, again from a customer saying that okay i bought this battery i bought this cell phone but now the battery is not working now i know the platform owner knows that okay this is a universal problem for this problem for this product so there is no further arguments they do a replacement so this is this what's what happens is this saves the time for both the customer and for the vendor because Otherwise, you have to go through uh, where, where the problem was, how where was the technical issue, what what, what was the, uh, uh, how, how how long did the battery last, how long did it take for charging, all those things. So let us not let the vendor will not waste time on uh, getting the details of it, rather than get the customer on board properly so that they replace it and sell the next product properly. Because otherwise, what happens is they are stuck in a loop and the customer experience customer experience that is the reason like these interact the analytics helps in a big level then 
Analyze, repackage, and relabel data. Okay. So, as I uh, in the earlier example, I said that okay, I want to say, uh, I want to project sales for the next one year. I want to um, uh, project my sales, my stocks, my uh, cash flow, everything for the next one year or next five years. How do I do that? I will take I will take for example the last two years of my uh, two years data of my sales. My purchase, my uh, my the the overheads, the salaries I have given, the capital, everything. Then what I will do is I analyze it, repackage it. Then I will present it to the business owners in a form, in a way that is easily understandable. And they said, okay, next year, this month, we might have, like for example, one crore of business, or this particular month, we might have two crores of business. On March, we will have less business. In April, we will have some more big business. Based on the comparison I have done in the last two years, I can do that. This is one thing. Then these stock markets, they also, what they do is, they do have the what, what is called the, the artificial algorithm um, trading, where they say that, okay, this stock will, will flourish well in the next three months. This stock will go down. So even that can be projected predicted with when you do a analyzing a repackaging of the data well then so that is that is but these things and all all this value lie around these all this data the value is hidden the value is hidden in the data which is already collected in the past one year past six months past six six years or a decade so so that that is that is the what you call the uh, irony of the data if you use it properly and well like you can match you can fit it your needs clean it filter it repackage it and relabel it and present it well so as simple as that so that is that is the simple reason that is a simple reason why these things has to be taken care of in a very proper way then implement a data driven strategy okay Today we know that okay we can do a lot we can do a lot with the data so we know that uh, we can uh, uh, we have so much of data around we know what what tools to use everything so even to extrapolate even to extrapolate more values what we can do is from now on you can increase the level of level of accuracy on the data logs which you are going to leave behind from today I can put more details okay but so far i would have say i would have just said that okay the uh, the grocery items were, sales were this much per day i can split it into multiple items i can say item x was this much item y was this much today item z was this much so i can split it i can split it and i can give more announcement more details for all the data from now on so that this will be useful in the next two years to give a better data driven strategy for analyzing the data so that is that is where the lesson we have learned the lessons we have learned is that that we have to create a strategy which will give a much more insight in the long run so this is a, one of the lessons we have learned then achieve a consistent flow of data achieve a that is always there because without a without a consistent flow of data you will not be able to arrive into the metrics of it meaning so today you say that okay we have a six months of data and you uh, and you have a big break you don't have the next six months of data so for in a in a, in a span of five years if you if you say that okay i have only two years of data with a lot of breaks with a lot of breaks and interruptions this will not yield value because you will not have, will not be able to analyze the pattern out of it you will not be able to extrapolate the value out of it so that is the reason the flow of data should be consistent always i we have to see that okay from the day we start analyzing it to the day we want to project it we have a consistent flow consistent flow then we will be able to do a much more clean job of uh, analyzing it so as simple as that so that is that is the reason you have to always plan in a way in a way that you you have always 
structured data or semi structured data or rare data stored and in a, the most detailed element or the way it could be done then operate platform as a service databases okay now so cloud is becoming more and more um, uh, uh, is becoming the industry standards these days even after this pandemic we are all connected by the cloud and the cloud is help is becoming a more is a catalytic more catalytic for our commuting than for um, uh, for workforce or whatever whatever applications we are running now so so we all business intelligence tools right now they support cloud databases on premise databases or the any data from any data form it could support but bi bi tools or now these days are up to the standards of the reason friends so so that is so this is in a nutshell how data is seen as a new oil as a new oil because you would have not seen you would have not seen how much of value already everyone is deriving out of it extracting out of it from the way of recommendations classifiers then um, uh, optimizing the custom, uh, support platform optimizing the uh, uh, support experience um, uh, analyzing on predicting the sales for the next years predicting the um, cash flow for the next few years so all those things become this is why data is seen in a in a, in a broader way as a new oil so as simple as that so this is a short introduction now okay now next we'll go into this what happened what happened in the past and what is different now you would have seen like changes always happen so that is tend to happen we always see changes every day and uh, um, and we are prone to changes always so what happened in the past and what is now the standard now see in the 80s or in the 70s or whatever when the tv uh, when the television uh, generation started where everything was pushed by advertisement like if you are to sell a product we have to go through advertisement media then then the product hits so then the hits the market then people buy it it, it could be horlicks or whatever product or colgate all the leading brands that's how they started the business with because otherwise then there were the newspapers there were the newspapers then the tv generations and all and this was the starting point where we started to analyze data we 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 saw that there is a product in the market either we, either via the newspapers or by word of mouth or by tv gen, or by the tv ads this is the first way of how data was handled but we didn't know that there was it is the data which was ruling everything then once the internet generation started there were always this advertisements google advertisements then uh, the rss feeds <clears throat> we had the web based news we have we have all, all all these podcasts all those things these were also influencing the our data purchase and your our um, uh, our analytics model like i would say that okay i will buy a product based on the web based news or by the rss feeds and in this nintendo generation you would have seen google you would have always seen google as a search engine company which is not because they got into they got into what you call a, became a data company when they started pushing ads based on your searches and patterns you have done so so you you, you can think that how 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 google makes a, what you call a business out of it but they were they were not in uh, what you call they, they always was one of the they i would say that they were non publishing corporations to recognize and acknowledge the value of data as a co product rather than a by product it was the first company to develop and launch products made not for the direct sales value but for the ability to generate information with the aim to monetize the data so more and more companies now now are following the google steps google footsteps because you would have seen that 
Google started as a search engine company, which we all know. Then what they do is they started pushing ads, pushing ads based on your search patterns and uh, search queries. Now they got into the space of uh, uh, um, what do you call the cloud engines, AI. Um, they have a range of products. They have a bigger range of products. They have they are into every every sector of the industry. So it is not that uh, they don't miss anything. But how they how they transformed this in the Nintendo generation, where they were influencing the web-based news and RSS feeds. They were trying to collect it, aggregate it, and push the right recommendations at every time. That is what was happening for the Google and that was a bigger hit. Now what happens is we still use an Nintendo generation. We do search for things and all. But now what we do is we look for more recommendations and reviews for each and product before we buy it. So that was a bigger leap in our generation where we don't buy things. We always consider that reviews are the best way of collecting the information about a product's feedback or drawbacks or whatever. Because if we know that, okay, this particular product on Amazon, it's not flourishing well because there was, there was a flaw in the product or there was, uh, there was a technical fault. So all, the, all those things, all those things were influenced by the reviews and the tweets and the posts and the instant messaging like WhatsApp or Skype or Facebook, whatever. So this generation is ruled more by this kind of tools, which is again, analytically possible to analyze reviews uh, because the reviews now, what we do is we do a sentiment analysis of the reviews. We see that why this particular product is failing. Uh, we do an NLP analysis the natural language processing analysis of the reviews and tweets and see that okay the sentiment of this particular tweet is bad is neutral or it's good the sentiment of this particular review is neutral or bad this is on an engine based but if you're going on a personal level you always check the reviews and say oh this is this doesn't have much likes this has lesser likes then all those things uh, the, all those things are influenced by just by the review so you you are not concerned to even to buy it so this is the biggest change now happened. So to, in order to compete with these changes, changes, how the business companies, all the business corporations are changing themselves is they are building bigger dashboards. They are building dashboards of these posts, reviews and tweets and analyze it in a bigger way, in a broader spectrum to see where they are failing because in those days, in the past, everything was like, as you said, it was the TV ads or the newspaper ads. You never got much feedback, but now you are, the feedback is a very broad scope. Today you get feedback for everything, for everything and whatnot. You get always the reviews and posts and uh, uh, everything. So you, you can't miss anything. You, you can't, you can't miss, you, you, sorry. <clears throat> you can't miss the information of the product. So as simple as that. So that is, that is the biggest change we have seen right now. So to, in order to compete, there was a bigger, there was a term that was coined that is called business intelligence. Business intelligence is a process of delivering actionable business decisions from analytical manipulations and presentation of data within the confines of a business environment. Business intelligence works best when the intelligent logic and data delivery are isolated to ensure a single source of truth. Okay. See, I, I will share you a small hierarchy. One second. So the definition for business intelligence, I would say is the process of delivering actionable business decisions from analytical manipulations and presentation of data within the confines of the business environment. See, the normal architecture, the normal organization chart of a business intelligence is like this. There is always a director on top, then there is a data scientist, BI developer, visualization developer, and analyst. What they do is, and what each and every one does is, data scientist looks into the data engineering part of it where they connect to the databases, they connect to the APIs, they connect to the CSVs, JSON files, everything. Then put it into a more structured database. 
which could be exported into Hadoop or Oracle or Cassandra or anything. So it could be uh, they can they can structure and uh, unify the data in one form. Then the BI developer, BI developer looks for the strategies for for, the, for what are the KPIs, the key performance indicators I would require. I would require for this particular data. So for example, like if I am an industry, if I'm industry, I'm in an automation industry, I would say that with the data collected, how will I optimize my workforce? This is one question. How will I optimize my overtime, overtime of the employees? How will I optimize my productions? How will I increase my production? So these, these is the questions that are given to the BI developers as the key performance indicator and based on that what happens is BI developer gets into the what you call gets into the data and do does the visualizer or sorry the querying part of it and gives it to the visualization developer to build the charts so so that is everything is based on KPIs and metrics because there is always a goal there's a business goal based on the business goal I have to I have to deliver the dashboards and reports for any company it could be a fortune 500 company or it could be a small company or it even could could be a, a, a electronics manufacturer or it could be an energy, energy production or it could be a bank or a, a school or it's a low-tech industry anything or a high-tech or high profile industry whatever so all those things have their business goals because end of the day end of the day either they have to sell or they have they need subscriptions they need a lot of admissions or this this is my business goal what i have to do is they they speak to they collaborate with the data scientists and data analysts and they say that where this particular data is present how it could be how it could be visualized properly and how it could be presented well so this is this is the where this is where the whole organization chart works in a better way to see that how things are done so once that is done once that is done you will have a better insight so the whole process the whole process i would say here so the data uh, the data analyst i as i shared earlier the data the database is there the data warehouse is there it's on premise or on or cloud so here what happens is you have database you have the data warehouse or so these are the sources of data on which the data analysts and data scientists work and they they what then after that it could the business analytics passes part is they, they deploy the business intelligence tools then do them statistics and mathematics around it because everything is inbuilt to the business intelligence tools now then they visualize it so this is the next part the ne from there what they can still do is they can predict because right now the prediction the prediction is becoming a bigger bigger game now because the languages like python or or machine learning or deep learning or whatever so these things can help you to predict data see you are right now the business intelligence tool what they, what it does is it gives you insight of the present day data with the present day data you can see what is the what is the insight what is the value out of it that is that is the data how the data is is transformed to a business intelligent way that is one thing but the next phase is becoming more and more interesting where you can predict so for prediction what they do is they use tools like python and all and uh, uh, in order to get the machine learning out of it or uh, do the deep learning out of it so this prediction is done with the next phase. So that is where you have to understand how the analytics, the, what do you call the, the business intelligence tool is transformed into the next phase. So now, now we have a um, um, what do you call um, a crisis. The crisis is the COVID-19 crisis can turn the the value proposition of data as you realize that we are flying in the dark and had to quickly become data and insight driven. Since the world is in recovery and reset, the time has come to put aside traditional thinking, reflect 
on recent transformations and changes and craft a strategy that makes data work as an organizational asset. Now we are in a bigger crisis because we see that this crisis is going to create unique opportunities for those who are open and open-minded and pragmatic. So that is where the COVID-19 crisis has given the lesson for us that we are able to today analyze the COVID-19 cases, the recovery cases, the ge geospatial uh, element out of it, where where there are where there is uh, where there is facility of the medical uh, um, uh, medical uh, okay uh, <coughs> the uh, the the health allowance sorry the all the medical facilities everything is allocated and where there is a pandemic where there is a lot of resources required we are able to all plan this from this this crisis with the visualization and the business intelligence tool because for the last six to eight months we are able to what do you call intelligently intelligently do uh, intelligently able to plan the pandemic proper pandemic crisis properly because of this you know even for the telehealth pre-aging for example like uh, we can able to recommend a patient whether if they require a hospital care or a home care or isolation everything based on data today we have given we have taken a lot of data sets from italy because because they had the lotus because they had the highest mortality cases in a short time so we are trying to still analyze the data for the clinical trials for the vaccine preparation everything so this is again how data is giving us the value out of it this is a straight example which we see that one on a handling the patient case basis we were able to spread out and see that whether the medical facilities are available in the covid affected places that is one thing then for the patients again we are able to advise them whether they need a home care or a hospital care or the uh, or, a, or a different medical care based on again the data available then the third one is even for the clinical trials for the vaccine preparation the data from the the treatments which are given in italy and other countries is helping us to prepare the find the medicine discover the vaccine soon so this is one of the biggest lessons now we got from the biggest crisis from the we are the biggest crisis and we got it and data is playing a major role for this so 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 like least again i would say that again data is an oil because once the vaccine is found that is going to be a bigger business and if it is tested and clinically trialed it is going to yield a lot of value for us and you know we will we'll be in a different atmosphere then because that is going to be a better atmosphere once the vaccine is found but again the data is going to play a major role now then next you would have seen this this is the lesson what what i showed you was the lesson we are learning in the crisis now the next one is if you see where are the practical uses i would have seen in a nutshell i would have seen the examples of it so the retail industry the demand forecasting retail search recommendations inventory optimization that was always in the retail it could be a shopping mall it could be an e-commerce platform or whatever so all these platforms they are able to do a demand forecasting prepare for the demand forecasting do check for the retail search and see whether they have they stock for the recent trend of items for example uh, right uh, like the uh, for this pandemic like for example like uh, let me take the example of a sanitizers now we'll require a lot of sanitizers these things and all based on the retail search now this is becoming a trending search so based on that they have to stock recommendations then recommendations is always like for example whatever based on my uh, purchase history i can always recommend okay this much these things could be always good for you because there is an offer for this or all that so these things these recommendations then inventory optimization obviously because i need not dump products which is not going to sell at all so let me not focus on items which is not going to sell rather i would just focus on the items which is going to be of high demand so this is 
this is all done this is the way analytics is used in the retail industry then in healthcare i already told you so if it is a telehealth a virtual care interoperability accelerator hospital imp impact forecasting biomedical data analytics in, in, this is one of the lessons we learned i i told you the example now the telehealth and virtual care is becoming now the teleconsulting is becoming now one of the biggest trend because many many could not go to the hospitals and all for the regular treatments whether they are affected by covid or whatever so now the virtual care is becoming a bigger industry where doctors you can consult the tele doctors so then we can uh, what they do is they see their old history patients and call them and say that okay the, uh, the doctors are available for this particular specialization at this time you can book appointments or whatever so this is done again with the data then interoper accelerator because you don't know what what facilities are available in the hospital then you can always enhance the hospital facilities then hospital impact forecasting um, uh, based on the number of uh, patients that is growing every day you will be able to see that, that how many ventilators are required or what kind of uh, um, whether the, uh, whether what kind of medicines which is going to be used for treating the covid patients do we have the enough stock so that you don't miss the boat then again the biomedical data analytics is like as i told you with the history we will be able to do the clinical trials preparation of vaccines and all so this is again the data is becoming a, a very bigger asset in the healthcare as well then financial services that as i told you now anti money laundering you know like uh, this hawala all those things are much more reduced these days and uh, because of everyone knows the bank knows the government knows all your spending patterns where your money comes from where your money goes so so you there is no bigger corruption or anti money laundering happening so this is again based on the data which is coming in and out know your customer this has been done for the last few years where every account is affiliated with a pan card or uh, or with an id or, um, or the aadhar card or whatever so with that they will know that where the customer is coming from where you, they don't have duplicates or duplicates duplicates or any uh, or different accounts so this is much more cleaner than lending doc processing lending doc processing is like if you are going for a loan <coughs> your processing is done so easily that you need not wait for months or uh, weeks to go there so because they will be able to analyze based on a bank statements credit history and the civil score whatever then they will be able to process your loan properly like always there will be always the like what you call the business days delay but it is much more faster these days risk analysis is they will be able to when you are taking a loan they will tell you they will be able to project that whether this customer can buy, this customer can pay repay the loan or this customer can uh, uh, um, can be a valuable customer so this this kind of risk analysis can be done again with the data so so you 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 have all this all this uh, all these things in financial services sector where it is giving into into a, into a a bigger bigger value as well then media gaming entertainment which i've already told you like hybrid rendering and visual studio media asset management media distribution and game servers okay now i left the game servers in the beginning okay now you we are expecting billions of users in the next 10 years on gaming industry because gaming is becoming more and more uh, what do you call trending because at least what 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 the what the analytics shows in the in the pandemic times that game game is becoming one of the tools for social engagement these days at least i uh, like since we can't go out or whatever they can't play uh, on uh, on a cricket ground or whatever they at least do it on the mobile so this is enabling for more social connectivity social networking so gaming is becoming a very big industry and this analytics this this the the amount of logs that is the game server servers are generating is so huge that there will be new values are right out of it then hybrid rendering and uh, virtual studio which i already told you we can we can recommend based on your uh, or your or your watching and listening history what to push 
whether you are interested in a song of a particular genre of a particular semi star or a particular singer or a movie based on a particular genre whatever so all those things could be managed from the data as well then industrial and manufacturing industrial adaptive controls manufacturing visual inspection logistic optimization connected operations so again industry again they do a lot of automations this right now what they do was iot is becoming uh, one of the biggest elements in this particular industrial sectors where they are able to optimize a lot they are able to optimize the manufacturing process they are able to do uh, uh, industrial the industrial adaptive controls are more, becoming more and more intelligent so that they are they are optimized well and their production is increasing to a much more effective way rather than the legacy way so again industry and manufacture is also affected uh, is is not affected i mean is revolutionized with the data with the data insights then public sector the public sector the public the public sector the public health platform as i told you transit reopening digital social security assessments visual government so again the health platform we are we are check into a lot of details then the digital social safety nets right now what happened is we we are getting into a lot of uh, social security uh, uh, spoofing and um, uh, uh, invalid invalid in, invalid threats and the security threats on a lot of things and all these things could be digitally verified and seen that okay this person is this because his face matrix is this is uh, based on the face api based on his uh, biometrics we can say that okay this person is this this this, this is x this can't be this can't be a morphed image so the the concept of the magic passport where they mark a person for a new face all those things could be reduced because of the data because we are able to analyze your face your face rectangle and say that okay this particular person is chaos this particular person is someone so it can't be uh, another one so this the security standards are all increased with the again with the data then virtual government is always a right now we are in almost in a, a virtual government because most of the things are happening on a conference level we are uh, everything is on a teleconference and virtual government is happening in a successful way again and again this could be monetized well with the what you call the data analytics so these are the direct cases where you see that the data is streamed in a much more broader part platform so as an as an industrial application i would say okay I, as i told you as we have spoken a lot about uh, the applications the way the industries uh, the advantages everything we have seen okay that is fair enough what is the next step we have to see whether what are the tools that will fit us the, because that is the most important thing for uh, designing the right tool for the right element and the, for the right application and for the right strategy so power bi what is power bi power bi is one of the relatively new bi tools from microsoft it is known as a self assessment service solution and integrates seamlessly with other data uh, sources such as microsoft excel sql server and its primary purpose is generate interactive dashboards reports and data sets for users so power bi and excel they work very well together what happens is it is a business tool it is again a business intelligent tool again it's a competitive tool like it can be um, uh, what do you call uh, uh, it, 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 it is for gen building generated dashboards then there is a d3js is is a data driven document is a javascript library known for its delivery of beautiful visualizations for manipulating documents based on data since d3 is rooted in javascript all visualizations makes a seamless transition on the web it's more of a web based tool d3 is a data driven document and it's a javascript library known for its delivery of beautiful visualizations by manipulating documents based on data so that is d3 
then R Studio. R Studio is a free open source statistical programming language that produces beautiful graphics. The R language has been widely used among the statistical community and more recently in the data science and machine learning community as well. Due to this fact, it has gathered momentum in recent years as a platform for displaying and delivering effective and practical BI. In addition to visualizing BI, R has the ability to visualize predictive analysis with algorithm and forecast. This is something missing in other tools. See, this is R Studio has its, has its advantage because it has the ability to visualize, predict, analyze, and based on algorithms and forecasts. So this is one of the, is a programming language. It is not a tool, I would say. It is a programming language. Similarly, Python. Python is considered as the most traditional programming language of all different languages that will be covered. It is widely used in general purpose programming language with uh, several modules that are very powerful in analyzing visualization data. And it is also used for predicting data as well, predicting and forecasting as well. So. Python is considered more traditional because it has been a long time. It has been the journey of Python is always there and the, um, the add-ons or the, uh, the community is very active and you have always add-ons and the community support is always there. People will try to improve the quality of it. There are a lot of uh, functions which is written now and then and updated scientific functions, statistical functions, all those things are added now and then. So it is, it is very easy that you can't miss it. So Python is one of the leading tool, I would say, but even though it can also predict. Qlik is again, is one of, it's something similar to, I would say Power BI or um, Excel, where it is also, a, it's a desktop application, which can, which can be used, uh, which can use for visualization as well. Then Tableau. Tableau is a, it is, it is Tableau, the advantage of Tableau is it's simple to use. You, you can just go and download, you can do a trial version and uh, download it. And they have some data limits as well for, uh, for a paid version, but you can always stick to a free version and uh, use it. And you can set up your, uh, try to import your Excel or uh, databases like MySQL or uh, MySQL server data into it and uh, deliver the dashboard. So Tableau is simple for, uh, um, for visualization. It's a very, one of the simplest tool. SQL Server is a suite. SQL Server is a suite of, is a suite of uh, dash, is a, is a suite because what happens is it has its own database. It has a lot of analytical functions. It has, uh, it has, it has tools for, into, uh, uh, tools for building dashboards. So SQL Server is a complete tool. It's, it's a complete suite of applications from starting from databases, to visualization to business intelligence business intelligence so it is much more simple much more simple than others because you can handle data you can handle data um, you can handle data in a much more simple way i would say like and visualize it so there is uh, uh, it is there are limitations out of it but since it's a microsoft product but you can still it's a fantastic tool. Splunk. Splunk is 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 just is it is what you call I would say. We use it personally or the company. We use it for logging the firewall logs. Imagine that there is a DDoS attack or uh, or uh, um, what do you call a, uh, a threat, a security threat. All those things can be analyzed and predicted with the Splunk. Splunk gives you geospatial, geospatial analysis of your logs, threat logs and security logs of your firewalls, routers, web servers, all those things integrated into one platform and gives you a bigger picture of what's going on on a defense level or a security level. That's where Splunk is much more effective as a visualization tool. It's not a business tool. I'm just, I just shared it because it gives you it to just see how diversified tools are in their purpose of application. So you will you to even uh, see the purpose. Then SAP SAP is always something they have always the SAP HANA or whatever. It's again a business intelligence suit where it can 
it can deliver a lot of uh, value out of it. So I know the focus is more on the Tableau, but Tableau I would always recommend is very simple to use. You can get into the formulas, we can get into the statistic formulas, just download it, convert it, uh, do your dull statistics in your visual insight. All those things are possible with this Tableau tool as natural. Now, the list is now what are the, I, again, I will just tell you the process one moment. Okay. The architecture means we, we discuss about the tools, we discuss about everything. So now, if you see the top layer, if you see the top layer, mobile devices, browsers, on-demand devices, M M M embedded content, MS Office, enterprise portal, everything. So what happens is, this is where, this is how you access your BI tool. It could be a mobile device, it could be a browser, or it could be from an on-demand device or it could be uh, it could be from embedded content or ms office or whatever so this is the way you access or from enterprise portal this is how you access the bi tool simple what you are accessing you are accessing the visualization part of it the dashboard part of it and the reporting part of it what does what does this do you have data from the universe semantic layer where they do is you have the data from the ERP, you have data from EW, EDW, you have data from relational data sources, you have data from Excel, you have data from uh, memory platform, you have data from Microsoft service, you have data from unstructured data. Everything put together, aggregated into a universe semantic layer and this is presented to the business intelligence platform and the dashboard is built for reporting so as i already told you that we have like different types of data uh, in these different forms structured semi structured raw api uh, coming from uh, business servers logic uh, business servers um, uh, erp servers crm servers um, uh, warehouses social media everything everything put together put together and presented to the business intelligence platform in this way so this is the architecture this is the architecture of how the bi works on a logical level it connects to the data from all forms then it gives you an intelligent platform for integrations and aggregations and from there you do the visualization dashboard and reporting part of it and you access it from wherever you want mobile devices laptops computers uh, or you, you embed it into your reporting platforms or into your applications wherever so you have everything in one go so it's simple so that is where the bi architecture is then if it is in a cloud platform as well like what happens is what you can again the cloud platform is again you can access data anywhere all these data as i told you the, your databases and all everything could be connected to any any time anywhere and uh, connections to live business data uh, you can always make connections to live business data and make smarter decisions it builds an interactive experience for business users and executives obviously because you because the the business users can connect from any mobile devices laptops or desktops and see what is exactly going on in real time and make smarter decisions and ability to intuitively access navigate analyze data because you can always make uh, go go front back and forth of your data for the last six months last six years last five years based on the availability of data and to see which which particularly fits for your queries and needs then 
you can do a smart search so for example like uh, uh, you imagine that your sales was increased to 10 uh, like 15 percent in the last three last 10 months and you would see you would be interested which particular item increased the sales in order to becoming more make a smarter search so you can drill down you can drill down into each and every element and see okay this particular item has flourished as as increase the sale to an optimal level so that is that is the next step we can that is where you make a lot of decisions and see which can help you so this is this is uh, this is again cloud or on premise doesn't make a difference and the last but not the least i would say that the bi and its benefits is it gives you the whole major points the decrease to query and reporting time, identifying and tracking key performance metrics, providing reports and performing analysis and planning and make the business decisions. So this is the benefit out of it you get from the BI tools. Either it could be a cloud, either it could be on-premise or either it could be a desktop tool. So if, if I need to summarize, I would say that, okay, what BI does is, as an architecture, it connects to different forms of data. A yeah, BI tool can be a Tableau, Click, or R, or Python, or um, Power BI, or whatever. It, 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 the tool is highly influenced based on your requirements. Then you decide what tool you are going to use. Based on that tool, you, you can use it as a cloud form, cloud variant, or a desktop variant. Then you connect to your data sources, build the aggregate it, make it as an intelligent one, then intelligent analytics out of it, do the engineering, sorry, do the statistical and mathematical calculations out of it, build the KPIs, build the KPIs and provide reports, make the business decision out of it. So BI as a simple platform, it's simple to use because everything is put together and made in a much more effective way. So that is where that is where you see the benefit out of it. Benefit out of it. So um, I would I would say that BI is more demanding on a resource level because based on the data used, you will be a, you will be able to change your architecture your system performance, your hardware, everything. So it's simple. It, I would say that you have to start somewhere, but you can always, you can always increase your resources as you go along. The la uh, just the last slide, I would just want to share the amount of data you have for the last 10 years, exabytes of data you have so that you can think the diversity, the diversification of having data and extrapolate and extracting the value and deriving the value out of it because you have so much of data you can't think of a legacy model rather than use a bi tool or a, a programming language like r or python which can derive value out of it so simple so this is how the data is grown and now we are in a better phase of making better decisions smarter decisions better better related queries and get the statistics and the value out of it. Thank you. So this is a simple introduction, I would say in a broader scope, but if you have any queries, just ask me, no problem. Thank you again. Participants, do you have any questions? Participants, do you have any questions? Sir, one of our participants, Ms. Suhasni, has asked which will be the best tool to analyze is the, the data. Chat where, where is the question? Okay. In the chat box, sir. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, 
no it depends on the size of the data or oh, see uh, if you are a programmer you can start with r or python if you are uh, analyst if you are a desktop person uh, if you don't have much of a programming language programming idea you can start with tableau or if you are uh, if you are, if you like power, uh, microsoft person you like more microsoft product then use power bi again it depends on the size of data because if you are going to speak if you are talking to uh, uh, we are talking of exabytes of data terabytes of data i would always suggest to go on the route of python or r or if you are just speaking on a gigabytes of data then power bi and uh, bi uh, power bi or um, click or tableau they are very good tools so ag again it is depends on your budget the size of the the budget and the size of your files and the kind of data you have I like personally also Tableau and Power BI. Uh, you are welcome. Thank you. Participants, do you have any more questions? Thank you, sir. That was a brilliant session. Thank you. The Again, way you explain about the concept of business intelligence tool and how it will help to prepare data for analysis was admirable. Thank you for imparting your knowledge to us. Thank you, and you're welcome always. And I wish you all all best, all the best. Thank you.